Bergeron really have a fair shot as a candidate for LSU's head coaching job? My, I think he has a fair shot if LSU doesn't get their man. And I think their man is either Tom Herman or Jimbo Fisher. And with the craziness going on in college football, LSU could miss out. I think O needs to win most of the games. Uh, I mean, I think he could afford to lose one. But as I think, it, but he, if he beats Alabama in a month, I think it would increase his odds tremendously. I'm about to say most. I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's most or every single one. Uh, I mean, if he... If he wins every game, and, and it, then he's got a shot. So is that fair? Probably not. I mean, that, no. but I'll tell you this: just from from watching LSU week one without him, I, I think they have a chance. I think LSU now has a chance with Ed Orgeron and a new style of offense because it will be new. It looked new already. I mean, you open the game four wide receivers, uh, you pass the ball a little bit more. I mean, even the first play of the second half when you're up 21 to nothing, you go deep, you, you throw a bomb. I mean, I, I just. I like what they did. Again, no Leonard Fournette. I think he'll have a shot. I think they have a shot to win every game they play the rest of the season. I think we'll see the best LSU we've seen go moving forward throughout the rest of the season. Well, I think that, um, you know, it's, it's, I agree with you guys. If they beat Alabama and if he's able to win at Florida, at Arkansas, and at Texas A&M, or if he just drops one of those games, yeah, but if he won. beats Alabama, then he has a legitimate shot, in my opinion, of being the guy who they select. Because if you're the athletic director, if you're Joe Oliva, and you're sitting there with some big money donors, at the top of your list, when you're looking for a coach, you want a guy who you at least believe that he can beat Nick Saban. And if Ed Orgeron proves to you that he can do that by doing it on the field, then he has to be a guy who's at the top of your list and not just the guy who's the flavor of the month, uh, uh, Tom Herman. So in my opinion, there's not a guy who sounds the part or who looks more of the part than Ed Orgeron. Charlie Strong is able to beat Oklahoma this week. You know, last year, that was his saving grace that kept him his job, as Paul, refer as Paul referenced. Could that help Charlie Strong keep his job going forward to the season, especially because the athletic director is looking at reevaluating everything, as he says. Des, what do you think? I think it would help, but um, it doesn't save him. He, he's going to have to still win out also. I mean, just the Oklahoma game is not going to save his job at this point. Uh, you know, we thought that the Notre Dame win took him right off the hot seat, and I think it did for about a week or two, but a then week. we <laughs> saw how Notre Dame started to play, and then we saw the Cal game. So I think beating Oklahoma, because it is the rival, I don't know if it's the Red River rivalry or the Red River shootout. You know, it depends on which week. Something. But I think because it's a huge rivalry, it's going to help him. But he's going to have to probably win out to save his job. He's going to have to, you know, show some progress as far as the team is concerned. I don't think that beating Oklahoma last year saved his job anyways. I think he's in year two. That's why he's still there. He's still, he was still try, allowed time to build his culture. Made an offensive coordinator to hire in the offseason, by the way, that's been dying. Dynamite. I mean, Sterling Gilbert was one of the best hires in all of college football. It's going to take, I think, Dez, it's going to take your prediction coming true. They're going to have to win the Big 12. I mean, no matter how they do it, they're going to have to come back and find a way to be the competitive and be in the race and win a bunch of games. It's not about OU for me last year or this year. Welcome into college. Football Live Extra brought to you by AT&T. And the question of the day, David, can Washington get over the hump against longtime Pac-12 nemesis Oregon? I'm not sure it's a hump anymore, Molly. It's more like just a little pebble. You know, there's not even a – I mean, what, it's, it's Oregon. Did you, did you watch them against Washington State a week ago or the weeks before that? They're, their defense is atrocious. The, the time of possession, Des, Washington State runs the air raid. They like to throw it around. You know, they like to, can, right. they don't control the ball very often. They doubled Oregon in time of possession. I mean, doubled them. Rushed for almost <laughs> 300 yards, almost 700 yards of offense. No, they, they, they're going over the hump easily. They'll clear this hump. They'll just step right over it. Yeah, I have to agree. I think it'll be a, a shootout, though. I think both teams will be uh, putting some points on the board because Oregon probably will still score. But, man, the way Washington played last Friday night against Stanford, I was just very impressed. And, David, I know you can appreciate this. They got pressure on Stanford's quarterbacks, no matter which one it was, with just four guys, their front four. They didn't have to bring extra blitzers or extra guys in the, uh, the blitzing scheme. So that was very impressive. And you look offensively, they have some serious, 
speed out there on the perimeter. So I think it's going to be a shootout. But like David said, Oregon's defense is just so bad that you would think that Washington would be able to pull away from the Ducks late. I'll make this really simple. Yes. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm really concerned about Oregon because, I mean, just a year and uh, two years ago, they were in the championship game, and this program is really uh, close to spiraling out of control, and I think it will start to after this game. All right. Make sure to check out these guys weekdays, 1.30 Eastern on College Football Live, and check out the podcast on the ESPN app.